Meet Josh. Hi, everybody. Josh is a high school basketball player, solid shooter, great teammate. Hey, don't forget my tenacious D. And he's my son. Uh -huh. So, what does Josh do to be the best basketball player he can be? I play tennis. Studies show that student athletes here in Texas who play more than one high school sport are more likely to excel. Tennis does more than improve Josh's conditioning. It gives him a fresh competitive outlet, reduces the risk of injury by cross-training, and introduces him to different coaching techniques and new friends. Don't get me wrong, hoops are my first love. Tennis just gives me a little break. So when the new season begins, Josh isn't burned out on basketball. He's eager to play. And you can see the difference in his game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Texas. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result, it transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports. There's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. First Lockhart National Bank has been meeting the needs of Caldwell County since 1889. We now serve Travis County with a branch on Slaughter Lane and Hayes County with a branch in Kyle, plus a brand new location in San Marcos. As a member of each of the communities we serve, our relationship bankers, tellers, loan officers, and managers are committed to achieving the financial goals of every customer, one interaction at a time. So whether you're dreaming of a new house, buying a boat, or sending your children off to college, First Lockhart National Bank will be there every step of the way with financial services and guidance you can trust. You can tell the pitmasters are making the magic happen every time you walk through the doors of Christ's Market. The delicious smell of smoked meats greets your every visit. Not going to be in Lockhart for a while? Christ's Market ships nationwide. Stop by Christ's Market at 619 North Colorado in Lockhart or find us on the web, Kreitzmarket.com. That's K-R-E-U-Z market.com. No sauce, no forks, just good taste naturally. All right, we are here at Connolly High School. They're called Pflugerville. The address is Austin. Doesn't matter, still Connolly. Connolly, one of the better teams coming out of the other district. Um, at home tonight against your Lady Lions. Um, Want to give a shout-out to my team real quick. We've uh, we finally got in contact with our QA. I wanted to thank Josh Cargyle for coming in and, and uh, being our QA tonight. We've never worked with Josh before that I recall. Of course, I am old and probably losing my mind, but I don't believe I've worked with Josh before, but we're glad to have him on board with us. Um, and then obviously, uh, the partner in crime that does everything. Um, Carrie Smith is here doing the production. She's gonna do color commentary. She's actually, being a mother of one of the players, got some background on, on the coaching staff and things of that nature. She's gonna cover that a little bit for you. Um, obviously, she knows the players well since they've grown up with her daughter most of her life. So, you know, it's going to be a good thing of some coverage for your Lady Lions tonight. Um, and then myself, Scott Smith, doing a play-by-play -play later. So I'm literally going to, since we have about 10 minutes for tip, going to hand it off to Carrie and let her kind of go over the information she has about the coaching staff and some of the ladies. So, Carrie, take it away. All right, all right. Can you hear me okay? Yep. All right. I'll start off with we're missing Coach Helms. We, you know, it's a different game without Coach Helms. The girls miss him, coaches miss him, we miss him, parents, everybody. Um, so shout out to him. We miss you. Um, now we have Coach Rogan and Coach Garcia here with us tonight. Both of them awesome coaches. Both of them pretty young coaches. Both of them doing really, really well with the girls. 
Um, Coach Rogan, you may know her brother. He played um, the Super Bowl this year for the Kansas City Chiefs. He was a long snapper there, so you might have seen him a little bit. Um, so she definitely comes from a sports background. She's, she's tough. She's a little quiet, but she's there. She's good. She's originally from uh, Washington. Um, graduated high school there, attended the University of Oklahoma, graduated in 2016. So again, she's pretty young. Um, she's, she's a teacher at one of our elementaries and an amazing coach here at the high school. Um, we also have Coach Garcia. Um, she, <laughs> I work with her at the junior high. She's a coach there, um, also our varsity coach here. Um, let's see, she's, she's, she has high school experience. She has a varsity experience. Um, she's taken some teams to playoffs. Um, she, she's also quiet. She's, she's not quite as young as Coach Rogan. Um, she gets in there. She talks to the girls. She gets them shooting. She is their shooting coach. Um, the girls have come a long way this year in shooting, um, and I would attribute that 100% to her. Um, she, she gets in there and just breaks them down and builds them back up. Um, she started with the, the freshman girls, who we don't have many on this team um, that came from her. Um, but you'll see as we get <laughs> as we get older, we just got hit in the face with the ball. Um, as, as, our, as our younger girls start to get older, you'll see her coaching come to life for sure. Um, but even even just this year, her being with our varsity girls um, a short amount of time because we miss Coach Helms, um, they've they've absolutely come a long way. Um, talking about the girls, yeah, these girls are like any other small town girls. They've been together since they were little. Um, I've had some of them at my house since they were little. I actually spent a lot of time with them over the past week. They all slept in Carson's room for, yeah, about a week. <laughs> so, yes, they're like my babies, um, and I love them all. They are an amazing group of girls, and, you know, it's hard It's hard to get a team to work well together. Um, it, it's This one's a new one. We, we lost a lot of seniors from last year. Um, we don't have many returning varsity players. Um, and we even have a freshman on our team this year, which is not normal. Um, and, and they've come together really well. They get along, which is odd for <laughs> girls. You know, I, I don't think there's one of them that has anything bad to say about the other. They really feel like a group of sisters. So we're hoping that that carries through this evening. They're, you know, they're nervous. They're excited. But, uh, I mean, they're just pumping each other up out there. And they have been <laughs> since about mm, last Tuesday. <laughs> well, um, you know, you talked about Dennis Helms. Dennis Helms, it, for all you that have followed Lion Country for a long time, Dennis Helms is a men's junior college Hall of Fame coach in the state of Kansas where basketball is huge. Yes, I mean, here football is huge. For sure. But he's also a Hall of Fame coach in Texas. So he is, as I call him, Yoda. He's been coaching – Heck, he was in my gym when I was 19 years old um, <laughs> back in Kansas recruiting. Not me because I was not good, but he was recruiting my teammates. And so when I moved from Kansas down to Lockhart and then I became the broadcaster and um, I heard that, you know, the girls coach was name was Dennis Helms. I thought there is no way this is the same guy that I remember from back in the day. And I'll be darned if it wasn't. And uh, I like to give him a hard time about being Yoda because he's been doing this for hundreds of years. And, and he's, the girls are very fortunate. Some, some parents don't like coaches that get after their kids. He does it because he loves them, not because he's belittling them. He, he does it to push them because that's what, honestly, a lot of athletes in today's world need in the years of calling timeouts and counting to five instead of back in the day what happened to us. <laughs> And when we don't remember what happened for a week, um, you know, it's it's coaches like that that get the attentions and, and get them going. And, you know, again, Helms has been out for a long time, but you wouldn't think so based off the way these girls are playing right now. Here, regardless of how this game goes tonight, they've knocked off some of the biggest teams in our district and an undefeated team at that. Undefeated, and, yes. yes. And the girls were telling me the other night that um, – one of their other bigger components, I, uh, opponents, I think it was Lhasa, um, actually texted the girls and was like, how did y'all beat them? We, <laughs> we wanted to do it all year and we couldn't do it and we're congratulating them. So it's such a neat thing to see the, the girls from other schools supporting each other just because they got to do something big. And that is, well, and what was weird, we, we had everything set up and I know Kevin's listening. 
Um, so la yesterday we were supposed to. The girls were supposed to play at six o'clock here, and I was not going to be able to do it because I'm also the voice of Concordia uh, Women's and Men's var uh, Basketball at the University up there. And so those games were happening at the same time the locker game was happening. And so Steve Johnson and uh, one of the board members and, and Kevin Mills and Carrie were going to uh, run the show last night, and then. Halfway through the afternoon, the game got canceled and moved to today, which made my day because I've coached a lot of these girls in the offseason, so I wanted to be here, and I get to be here, so that's awesome. The bad part about it was I got to drive all the way to Concordia University. I literally was sitting in the parking lot underneath the tree, and I heard a cracking noise, and I saw a tree in front of me split in half and fall to the ground because of the ice on the trees. And uh, it, was, it was crazy. So I moved my car from the tree, parked somewhere else. I went inside. I wasn't even in a building 30 minutes before they canceled the Concordia games. And um, in 30 minutes' time, the ice had already accumulated on my car. And I was just amazed. By the time I got back to Lockhart yesterday, the sun was actually shining at that time. And all the ice on my car had melted off. That's the difference in like a 45 to an hour drive of how different it was between we had some kind of bad weather, but up north, they got it bad. Yeah. Um, but anyways, we got it to where we are uh, now getting the girls' game tonight. And after they win tonight, we'll be ready for whoever we play next. Most likely it's going to be, I'm guessing, probably about the same day. Hopefully not on a Thursday, but same kind of playoff times, Thursday or Friday of next week in the second round. If they do not win, which I do not expect that to happen, even though, again, on paper, this team is incredibly awesome, but I've seen how this Lockhart team's playing, and if they just continue from what they've been doing, they're going to be they're gonna be just fine. Now, the scary part about it is we were here long before the Lions got here, and they have a post player that's easily as tall as me, if not taller. I've seen her play summer ball. She's very good, and they've got a lot of guards that go with her. So the girls are going to be have to have their A game out tonight. There can be no letting up, no coming out slow. They've got to come out to play. Um, but, again, I think the ladies are going to do what they have done the last three or four games, and that's just battle to the end. Yep. And that's that's one thing about these girls. It doesn't matter who they're playing. They're going to fight you to the end. That's Absolutely. just the way they are. They're completely scrappy. They <laughs> they've learned to do that. So, you know, we're, we're about a minute 45 away. We're going to go ahead and take a commercial break, give some love to our sponsorships. And then when we come back, it's probably going to be about game time to do national anthems, starting lineups, and things like that. And I apologize that you're not seeing the game, but I do have a site to go to for you all. If you go to YouTube, and all you have to type in for this is Coach B as in boy, P is in Paul, 21. You go to YouTube, type in Coach. B is in Bob. P is okay. in Paul, 21, and it will bring up the stream from the high school for the game. And as a matter of fact, I've talked so long, we're about ready to start, so we're not even going to go to commercial break. But that's the YouTube site if you need to go to it, because of the fact that um, F, I believe it's FS. HS, I believe is what they're called. Anyways, they have all the rights to the playoff games, and they're wanting hundreds of dollars per game to show the games. Obviously, we, we can't get that done, so um, you're going to hear it as a radio broadcast tonight, but you can see it if you go to that YouTube site. And it got deafening and quiet in here. It is so quiet. And cold. And cold. If you guys need to hang any meat or anything, um, this <laughs> is the place, the place to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fat guy wearing a hoodie, and I'm cold in here. Yeah, I got Carson's litter jacket on, and I'm still cold. So I apologize. I'm getting messages from my work because, you know, we got to make sure we bother me while I'm on a <laughs> broadcast here.
All right, well, that was the starting lineups for the Cougars and the Lions. Again, I want to give you the little YouTube uh, address you can go to to watch this game. You won't be able to hear anything. You'll be able to hear us if you want to um, listen to us. You have us here like a radio broadcast, and it's kind of like when uh, people have to listen to certain announcers on TV they don't like. They just put mute on. You could listen to us, and if you go to YouTube and type in the word coach, B is in um, Bob, P is in Paul, 21, you'll get the feed for this game, and it's been going on for a little while now. Everybody's got themselves in the position, and as usual, junior Grace Stoffel will be jumping against the very short uh, number 21 Rollins, and I believe they have her as a six-footer, and I stood up against her. I'm six foot tall, and she's taller than I am. And so, as you can see, they've, they've got some good height on their team. Both teams have about the same kind of depth sitting on the bench, so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. <clears throat> and the jump is won by Conley, and it will be Fowler, the senior, that will walk it up the court here and get things going against the 2-3 zone from Lockhart. They get it inside. Ball is kicked out. Three, or the shot is on the way, no good. Blocking out on the ball. That's a travel that got they got away with that one. But here comes Johnson with the ball out of the pile. She's going to go to the hole and puts it in. So sophomore Malaya Johnson puts us on the board first. Two to nothing, Lady Lions. Seven thirty to go, first quarter. Fowler has the ball, swings it to the right side. That's going to be right in the corner. It goes. They're trying to get the big girl to go to work. Good job by Grace Stoffel to stop her. Carson Smith gets the steal. And here comes Malaya Johnson again. And they're going to double team Malaya. The ball's turned over, but it ends up in Carson's hand. She shoots from three. It is long, but Grace gets the rebound, kicks it out to Johnson. Shot up, no good. Ball's loose, and it will be Wright that comes out with it. So for, uh, for the Lady Lions, they've come out playing. At the other end, though, Grace is going to pick up the foul as Fowler goes to the basket and scores. Two to two is your score, and they will go to the line as Grace picks up foul number one. That's team first foul. And like I've always told people, if you're, you know, if you're going to foul them, don't let them score that layup. It, the girls are looking together. They, they all said they were very, very nervous, which is understandable. So she makes the free throw with ease. Three to two is the score. Full court pressure. And anybody that's scouted us knows that pressure is going to give us a problem. Robinson with the steal. Gives it to right over to the side. It goes. And that is Barrera who hits the three-pointer. And so timeout immediately by the Lady Lions as Barrera hits the three-pointer with 6.34 to go first quarter. 6-2 to two Cougars you're watch, are listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vibe Live. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted best chiropractor and best chiropractor's office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. We're going to do a quick shout out to some of our other sponsors, The Pearl, Rhonda Reagan Realty, Diesel Dogs, Snap Fitness, State Farm, and Westie. So they, it looks like they've got Malaya Johnson with a turnover. The girl, as I was just telling Carrie, if we, if we could just calm down a little bit against their pressure, it's not like they're going crazy on us. They're just putting pressure on us. A couple turnovers, but we'll see how we respond after this one. Typically with pressure, it takes us a little time to warm up. Yes, it does. They've got Barrera the ball. In the corner, it goes to Fowler. Three-pointer is no good. Malaya Johnson comes out with it. She's going to try to beat everybody down the court. She lays it up and misses. Natalia's there. She'll shoot, and she misses. And the big girl comes down with it as Rollins will kick it out. Down it goes to the court. Layup at the other end by Robinson. That is her first two of the game. Eight to two. Again, that pressure looks like it's going to it looks like a 2-2-1 two, two, press. We turned it over again, but then Carson Smith with the steal gives it to Johnson. Johnson's going to take it to the hole, kicks it over to Natalie. Natalie scores. 
Natalia with a big bus bucket there, making it 8-4, to four, and their coach now very unhappy. So we're going to take another commercial break at 539 mark. It's Cougars 8, Lions 4. You're watching Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vibe Live. Link Realty proudly supports Lockhart Lions Athletics. For all of your real estate needs, come see Link Realty on the square in Lockhart or visit them online at linkrealtytx.com. All right, we are back. Again, on paper, this team should beat us by 30-some points. Their record is amazing. The teams they're beating is amazing. But the Lady Lions, as I knew they would, they're coming out battling. It's like a bunch of little chihuahuas out there trying to get things done. Um, it looks like they have put um, Destiny on the bench, and they've brought in Mandy Garcia. Mandy's good to have in. She's quick, and she's good against the press. So they're going inside, and Smith does a good job against um, Rollins, but Rollins from about 12 feet out knocks it down. 10 to 4 is the score, and they're going to call a kick so the Lady Lions will keep possession. Give a shout-out to Josh Cargill, my QA tonight. Mandy Garcia gets the ball, getting some heavy pressure by Wright. They're needing some help. They give it to Smith. Johnson up top. She's gonna, she tried to drive that they stopped her and then the ball is picked off as it's gonna be Fowler going the other way. She passes it and they decide they wanna set things up. Three pointers on the way from Barrera and she hits her second three of the game. It is now 13 to four and they're gonna call a foul. And I believe they will get right with the foul. That'll be her first, team first. And this is good because really when we have teams that press us like this and give us a lot of pressure, we somehow can pull the fouls often. So if we can start getting their girls in foul trouble, I think we, <laughs> we can maybe do well. They haven't gone to the bench that I've noticed yet. Oh, wait, yes, they have, actually. They brought Barry in. Good job by Mandy Garcia. And then she dribbled off her foot, and Fowler comes out with a no-check that that's Barry. Barry to Fowler. Fowler's going to drive baseline, puts it up, and she'll bank it in. Fowler with five. 15 to four is your score, 420 to go first quarter. Johnson in trouble, gives it to Garcia on the right side. Spin move by Garcia. Grace puts the screen out there, but good defense by Wright. Didn't give her the baseline. Wright is very quick. I watched her in their practice before the game, and she's very quick. Still there by Robinson. She's going to give it up. Fowler. Oh, that wasn't Fowler. That's Barry. I keep getting those two confused. Barry scores the layup, and we have another timeout called. It's a 30-second timeout. We're going to leave it here because of that. 17-4. to Cougars are on top with 3.49 to go first quarter. And, it, it, and again, it's, it's just the fact that this team – when we were here watching, their coach was getting on to him because I think they were looking past the Lions, and their coach was hounding them pretty hard about getting focused for this game tonight, and I think maybe she got their attention. <clears throat> we definitely going to have to try to find some way of getting the ball to the basket because right now their defenders are cutting us off, and we're not getting a whole lot of anything. And size seems like it's an issue for us right now. We've played other teams that have some size. Um, <laughs> number 21, she's ginormous, so we're going to have to figure that out. But Grace has arms that are about six feet long each. <laughs> so if anyone could do it, it's Grace. Yep. she got that attitude, too. Yeah, she kind of mean. <clears throat> 3.45 to go first quarter. Johnson going up against Robinson. Ball's kicked off of Robinson's foot. Natalia with it. And the ball gets knocked away again. Robinson all over the place defensively. Pretty much every girl we have with the exception. Oh, there's one that's our size. Gomez Hyde checks into the game. So they've literally got maybe two players that are about our size and the rest of them are taller. And a lot of athletic ability to go with that. So the Lions are going to have to get it figured out here pretty quick as they're up against a man-to-man. -man. Natalia is going to drive baseline, kicks over to Grace. Perfect steal there by Wright. She's going the other way, crosses it over to Fowler, and Fowler will score. Nope, check that. That was Barry. Barry again. She now has four. 19-4 is the score. 
3.15 to go. And Fowler with another steal. One thing about this Connolly team is they do not miss a layup. So Fowler was able to get yet another one. She now has seven for the game. 21 to four here in the first quarter. Garcia is going to drive baseline. She throws up the floater. It does not fall. It is rebounded by Rollins. Up to Barry it goes. Barry is going to shoot the layup and miss. And Wright gets the rebound. I believe I hear Mr. Stoffel in the crowd. Is he here? Yes. Mr. Yes, Stoffel I heard him. Here. Jump ball going to be called. Garcia gets on the floor. Even with headsets on, you can hear him sometimes. Yeah, he's most certainly the echo of Coach Helms. <laughs> So, Johnson steps off, and um, Destiny steps back on. They're still going. And honestly, it's not even really a press. It's just man-to-man, -man and they're jumping the ball. They're trying to double-team the ball. And in our district, we're not used to playing man-to-man -man at all. Especially girls this size and this quick. Mm -hmm. Grace doing a great job. She goes up against the big girl, and she gets blocked. It goes out of bounds off the Lions. But again, the good thing is she's, she's penetrating and getting to the basket. Wright will bring it up to court for the Lady Cougars. 21 to four, just under two minutes to go first quarter. In the corner it will go, as that's Gomez Hyde who throws it inside to the big girl, gets blocked. Ball's bouncing around and it goes out of bounds. It will stay with the Cougars. And it looks like uh, Hernandez has also stepped in. I talked to her before the game for the Cougars. She is a senior. So it looks like they've gone to their bench with the exception of two players. Wright will toss it in. No one's there. Garcia comes out with it, and here we go the other way. Garcia is going to shoot and misses. It's going to go out of bounds, and they're going to say it goes to the Cougars. So right with the ball up top. They thought about the three. They went inside to Fowler, and that is going to be, I believe, uh, Grace's second foul. Is it on Grace or is it on I Nope, it's it, was on on, it was on Carson. Mm -hmm. So the bucket is good by Fowler. Fowler's having a great game already. She has nine points. She's one for one from the line. That's the first foul on Carson. It's team second foul. Fowler with a pretty nice free throw shot, and she rims it off. Maybe I should say that more often. Wright gets the rebound, though. Ball's loose. Destiny gets the steal, gets it up to Garcia. Garcia's going to drive the lane, and they're going to call a foul. And I believe that one is going to be on Fowler. That'll be her first, team second. They're going to call the baseline. No? Nope, oh, getting her to free throws. So yep. Mandy will go to the line. Mandy's a pretty good... Free throw shooter. And that one rims off. 23 to four, 116 to go here in the first quarter. And the Cougars are now starting to unload their bench, putting a lot of girls on the floor. Second free throw is good. Mandy with her first point of the game. It's now 23 to five, 112 to go first quarter. Fowler's going to slow it down against this 2-3 zone. Screen set by Hernandez. Fowler shoots the three. It's no good. Ball's loose. Natalia comes out with it. Hands it off to Garcia. We're under a minute. Fowler versus Garcia. Here comes Garcia around the right side. Pulls up, shoots the jumper off the glass. No good. Grace with the rebound. Can't get it to fall. Shoots again. They're going to call foul. And they're going to call the foul on Johnson. That's going to be her first, team third. And Grace Stoffel will go to the line to shoot two.
And it rims off the front. We were noticing before the game that even though we're on the road, we actually have more people here than they do. It's bizarre. I think they were a little more hesitant with the whole COVID thing. Yeah. Second free throw is on the way, and she gets every part of the rim but scores it. And now Grace has a point. 23 to 6, 26 seconds to go first quarter. Fowler's going to walk it down the court. Man-to-man -man for uh, the Cougars, 2-3 zone for the Lady Lions, but we've known that throughout Dennis Helms' career as a coach. And it's an aggressive 2-3. Fowler drives the lane. They call a travel. Destiny probably got away from a tackle. <laughs> I mean, she hammered her on the way to the line, but nothing was called. Ten seconds left. Destiny will give it up to Carson. Seven seconds left. Carson gives it to Garcia with three seconds left. Garcia throws up a three at the buzzer, and it's no good. And that is how the first quarter will end. It is the Lady Cougars 23, the Lady Lions 6. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vibe Live. Come on in to Texas Oil Express, where we can change your oil in under 10 minutes. We also do inspection stickers. Be sure to shop Lockhart first and check us out on Facebook. Voted Caldwell County's best oil change in 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2013, 2018, and 2019. Link Realty proudly supports Lockhart Lions Athletics. For all of your real estate needs, come see Link Realty on the square in Lockhart or visit them online at linkrealtytx.com. All right, we are back here, and I guess there's definitely a difference between my headset and hers. Is, as I've been told, that hers is a little quiet, so we moved hers up and moved mine down, which is probably better for everybody that mine is down. So first quarter, 23-6 for Connolly. Barrera with six. Fowler with nine. Robinson, two. Rollins, two. And Barry, four. For the Lady Lions, Garcia, one. Johnson, two. Stoffel, one. And De Los Reyes, two. Looks like both teams are going to come back with their starters. <coughs> Check that. It looks like Garcia's on the floor. So Johnson is still on the bench. They throw it inside to the big girl, Rollins. She can't get it to go, but the rebound was there by Fowler, and she gets fouled, and I don't know if it's Grace or if it's Carson. I'm thinking it's Carson again. It is Carson. That's her second team third. Or yeah, team third. Fowler's one of those players, I mean, if you had to pick a, an, an NBA player that she reminds me of, even though she's not very tall, she reminds me of Magic Johnson because she can play inside and out, and she's very good at both of them. Johnson's going to check back in. Masur's going to check in. Um, she's a sophomore. So we have two seniors, two sophomores, and a junior on the floor right now. Fowler hits both her free throws. She's already in double digits with 11. 25 to 6, still pressuring. Garcia comes out of it, gives it to Johnson. Fowler bodies her up, steals the ball. Barrera with it. Left-handed shot goes by right. That's her first two of the game. 27-6, ball stolen away. They'll get it back. Right layup, good. She now has four, 29-6. And it's stolen again. Barrera with it now. Fowler's going to shoot the three from the corner. It's way long. Natalia gets the rebound, and here comes Johnson going the other way. She will take Barrera to the hole, and it's a block shot for Barrera, who is a very tall and lanky sophomore. I have seen her play a lot of summer ball, and I know she's got a lot of talent. They get the ball inside to Johnson. Grace with it up at the top of the key. Garcia. They wanted to travel, but she didn't jump. She just kind of went on her toes. Ball is thrown away as Garcia threw it a little too hard. And Johnson couldn't handle it. 6.56 to go first half. 29-6. Cougars on top. Wright gets it to Barrera on the left side. It's back to Wright. Wright's going to pull up, shoot the three-pointer. It rims off. No good. Gray Stoffel with the rebound. And that 20-degree weather is blowing in the back off this little draft we have behind us. 
Garcia's turnaround jumper is no good, and it is rebounded by Rollins. She'll kick it out to Fowler, and they're going to get Garcia with a foul. Garcia's first, team fourth. Barfield's going to check in for the Cougars, and it looks like Wright is going to check out. No, wait a minute. Yeah. Who did they bring out? I don't even see who they brought out. So Wright has it up top. Barfield has just checked in for them. Barrera on the left side. Hands it off inside. They give it to Rollins. They're going to say three seconds in the lane, and that's going to be called on Robinson, and which is a good thing because... Rollins took it to the basket and laid it in, but no basket. Full court pressure again. It's still a man-to-man. -man. They get another steal. Barrera throws it to um, right, back to Barrera from three. She misses this time. And they're going to call a traveling on um, Robinson. She got the rebound and took a step. Lady Lions still going against this man-to-man -man press. They double the ball any chance they get. It's not even really a press, to be honest. If they would get the ball to Garcia and just let her beat the two girls trying to trap, we'd get through it just fine. Ball was stolen away by Wright. Bar uh, they get it out to Barrera on the wing. She misses another three. Robinson with it, back to Barrera. She misses another three. Garcia with a rebound. Garcia is going to fake the pass. And it gets knocked out of bounds by Wright. And it will stay with the Lady Lions. 5.28 to go. First half, 29 to 6. Lady Cougars on top. And it looks like we have a timeout. We'll go ahead and take a real quick commercial break. You're watching Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vipe Live. For your plumbing service work in Caldwell County, call Darren Meitler from Meitler Plumbing at 512-398-3146. Meitler Plumbing, a local and family business, has been in the Caldwell County area for over 30 years. Voted best plumber in Caldwell County multiple times. Holds a master's license and bonded. Call Meitler Plumbing for your plumbing service work at 512-398-3146. Owner Darren Meitler, a 1989 Lockhart alumni and football captain for the Lockhart Lions. Go Lions! Once a Lion, always a Lion. Okay, we're back here at Connolly High School here in Pflugerville slash Austin. <laughs> they are Pflugerville Connolly, but their address is in Austin. 78753. That's Austin. So, this is a beautiful gym. I really like it. It's a big gym. It reminds me of gyms that I, from where I come from. <clears throat> um, Except the stands are empty. Well, that, yeah, the exception <laughs> of that. I've never understood why there are such good athletes in Texas. I don't understand why they don't follow basketball better than they do here. Is the basketball the same? No. But do they play with better athletes doing it? Yes, they do. Lady Lions have the ball into their basket. Give it to Grace. Grace has the ball swiped away from Rollins. And they're going to call the foul on Johnson. That's going to be her first, team fifth. One thing I'll give Grace, she's not backing down. Yeah, they're, they're bigger and stronger than she is, but she's not afraid of them. She's going after them. Yeah, you see her legs already? There are about five purple circles on them. <laughs> she, and that, that and she's bright red, which means she's playing hard. Anytime she turns as red as her jersey, then you know she's working hard. Mm -hmm. Around the corner, right goes. Wright is a very good athlete, but she traveled with the ball. When I watched her when they were warming up, I mean, her quickness is its scary. I mean, yeah, she's not a tall person, but, man, she can get from point A to point B quickly. Yeah, you're talking about athletes. This team has some amazing athletes. <laughs> yes, they do. They definitely do that. Garcia with the ball takes on um, Wright, got around her. Johnson having some trouble, though with uh, Robinson. Robinson's get, gotten after her. She gets the foul that time. That's her first, team fourth. But Robinson has been, I can tell, has been coached. Get after this girl. She has a tendency sometimes to dribble the ball out in front of her, and they're getting after her. You, if you let Johnson get by you, you're in trouble. She's going to score on you. But if you keep her in front of you, that's where you can kind of start getting some steals. Keep in mind, she's just a sophomore. I was going to say that, and to be starting on varsity as a sophomore, as a point guard, yes, no less. Exactly. Yes, 
the, the defense has been just unbelievable. We're having a hard time getting it inside. And we're not a great outside shooting team. Oh, nice screen there by Morgan. I think someone's going to have to go to the chiropractor after that one. <laughs> My gosh, that girl's neck jerked back. Yeah, Morgan's nice and solid. She wasn't going to play. She's a volleyball player, and she wasn't going to play this year and all of a sudden decided to play. And she's done some good things this year. Again, another sophomore. Mm -hmm. Very young team. I can't wait to see what this team does next year when these younger girls who had never seen varsity are now playing varsity. It's going to do a lot for their confidence coming into next year. Barrera is something else from three-point range. That's her third one. 32 to six, just under four minutes to go, second quarter. Johnson tries to split the defenders. Ball is loose. Johnson travels as she got up after getting the ball. And Morgan's gonna check out. Carson checks back in. <coughs> They'll get the ball to Barry on the right side into Rollins. Carson does a great job of keeping a girl three inch, or three foot taller than her out of the lane. Actually, we've done a great job against Rollins. Carson Smith with the rebound. Ball's tipped away. It's Fowler gets it back. Barry misses the layup. And we have a foul called. I believe Malaya Johnson gets called with the foul. That's going to be her second. Team sixth. So Conley's in the bonus from here on out. Barrera's going to throw it in. Oh, I didn't see. I was wondering who she was throwing to. I didn't see that girl. Mm -hmm. Barrera from three, and she misses. And Grace with the rebound. And then they are going to have a battle between her and Fowler, and a jump ball's called. It will stay. Or no, it's actually going to go to the Lions. I thought that Conley was going to keep it. The Lady Lions have done a pretty good job here in the second quarter against them because, I mean, they've only given up nine points versus the 20 that they gave up in the first half, 23. Smith from the corner is long, rebounded by Fowler. Fowler's going to dribble through four of the girls, taking on Johnson now. Left-handed layup is no good, and they're going to call the foul on right. That's going to be her second, team fifth. And we should be shooting, correct? <coughs> Not yet. Okay. Johnson takes it around the right side inside to uh, Garcia layup is good beautiful pass by Johnson to Garcia Garcia now has three 32 to 8 230 to go first half and, and talking about the nice pass from Johnson and the kids the girls being young this is this is going to be great for them for next year. Oh, yeah. They're learning so much and seeing so much. I doubt they're going to see too many teams like this, no. <laughs> especially in our district. <laughs> as Fowler drives the lane and sticks it home, and she now has 13 points. 34 to 8. Two minutes to go first half. Fowler, the senior, has pretty much led the way for her team. Looks like Cruz is going to check in for them, and Wright will check out. It almost seems like Fowler is their girl that keeps them calm. Calm, going, everything. And when you watch them warm up, that she's not the one that I would have picked out that would have been the no. leader at all. But she's definitely got it going here. She's scoring. Her team is just comfortable with her out there. They get it inside. The big girl knocks Grace back about two feet and scores as – Rollins now has four, and I kind of was saying they need to stay in front of her. Don't stand behind her. Stay in front of her. Make her – or don't let her catch the ball. If you, if you do, you're in trouble. Natalia up top with the ball. Minute 25 to go. Carson. Garcia with it now. She's going to try to penetrate. And guess who's there to get the jump ball? Fowler does a great job of stopping Garcia and gets the jump ball. So we're a minute 15 away from the halftime, and the Lady Cougars are up 36 to 8. I think that the Conley coach has done a great job of 
having the bench players kind of intermingled with the starters here and there to where they're not losing anything, but they're also giving other girls some experience as well. Garcia with the steals, Fowler turns it over. And look at that, Barry getting from point A to point B. She is quick too. Gets the steal from behind, hands it off to Fowler. And Fowler's gonna go to the basket, lays it up and scores. And Carson, or not Carson, but um, Grace is gonna pick up a foul. So that will be another bucket for Fowler. She'll go to the line again. Thir oh, go ahead. I was just going to say something about this Connolly team is that, you know, we've, we've played some teams that have beat us pretty well, right? Um, and they come back and are not very nice, but this Connolly team seems to be pretty classy. Oh, yeah. The free throw was missed by Fowler, which that's on the second one she's missed tonight. 38-8, to eight, first half. Destiny over the top with Carson with it. Oh, I was going to say Fowler had to have gotten a foul there. That's her second. And Carrie kind of touched on this earlier as they now have two of their better guards in foul trouble right now with two fouls with a 30-point lead. I don't think they're obviously too worried about that just yet, <laughs> but it could come back. Because remember the last time that we were down big, we came back and won a game. Morgan off the rebound miss from Johnson. Morgan Missouri is able to hit it. She gets her first two of the game. And the Lady Lions have hit 10, 38 to 10 with 14 seconds left. Gomez Hyde gets it to Barry. Fowler. Fowler going to shoot the three-pointer. And it rims out. But they did get the board. And that's how time will run out. So your halftime score is the Lady Cougars 38, the Lady Lions 10. You're watching Lion Country Broadcast Network fueled by Vibe Live. Green Group Holdings is a proud sponsor of Lion Country. Green Group is an environmental services company that specializes in the planning, implementation, and operation of waste disposal, recycling, reuse, and restoration projects. These projects are designed with the environment and safety as the highest priorities, with an approach that provides significant value to the communities in which they're located. Currently, Green Group is proposing a development in northern Caldwell County, 130 Environmental Park. This proposed project will be a state-of-the-art, environmentally friendly, mixed-use development a few miles north of Lockhart, Texas. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted Best Chiropractor and Best Chiropractor's Office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. For over 15 years, Raina Drywall and Paint has been serving Lockhart and the surrounding counties. We are experienced in all phases of construction. You can count on us for any exterior or interior painting job. Call 512-925-0634 to schedule an appointment with Raina Drywall and Paint today. All right, we are back here at Connolly High School where the halftime score is the Connolly Cougars 38, your Lockhart Lions 10. And, you know, we talked about it before the game. On paper, this team should flat destroy most of the teams I go up against. They're a very talented team. Um, the the person that has impressed me the most, though, has been right now their leading scorer in Fowler as um, she has scored 15 points. But like we talked about just a little bit ago, she kind of puts this team at ease. I mean, they kind of go off her, her feed. I would almost say in the second half, if there's any way that we could get somebody to get her riled up or something, mm -hmm. maybe it would help us get get them kind of – off kilter and get back in the game. When we were watching them in pregame uh, before the girls got here, it was number 21 Rollins who we thought, oh my God, this girl is something else. She's over six foot tall. They have her listed at six foot. I would say easily six one. I'm six foot and she's taller than I am. But she's only got four points tonight. So for our girls, as short as they are, to keep her in check, uh, Grace Stoffel has done a great job on her. Carson Smith has basically kept her out of the paint and. You know, when she has scored, it's been because of a, uh, an offensive rebound or something like that. So the girls have done a great job against her. Um, scoring for the Conley Cougars, 23 points in the first quarter, 15 in the second quarter, 
Barrera has nine off three three pointers. Um, Fowler has 15, Robinson two, Rollins four, Wright four, and Barry has four. On the other side for the Lady Lions, they scored six points in the first quarter, four in the second quarter. Um, Garcia leads the way with three, uh, Johnson two, uh, Stoffel one, De Los Reyes two, and Monsieur uh, two. And but keep in mind, and, and I'm not I'm not saying that the same things are going to take place this game because two different teams. But when we played um, Crockett at home, um, we were getting manhandled at halftime, and we For came sure. back. I think the spread was farther than this. Easily, mm -hmm. easily, and we came back and won by five, and put that game away. Um, played Anderson, undefeated team, and jumped out early. And then they battled back, and they even took us to overtime. And I thought right then and there with this undefeated team tying it up in overtime, they're going to beat us. I, I, I just don't see how we can stop an undefeated team. We gave them another chance, mm -hmm. and I'll be darned if the girls didn't, you know, take over the overtime, and they end up beating them and knocking them off. So to go 10-4 in district play, that says a lot for these girls because I'm going to tell you because I coached them that Garcia was a big, big person in our, in our summer program and played some varsity. Um, Malaya started playing varsity last year, halfway through the season. She started out the, with the JV and the freshman type group, and then she got moved up at the end of the season. She's seen enough time to call her a varsity uh, type person, but you know, not a ton of time. Uh, Grace Stoffel played some sparing minutes here and there throughout her year last year, but she was injured most of the year. Carson Smith, and that's it. None of these other girls played. No. None of them. And, um, you know, we've got a girl that's a freshman. Um, her sister was uh, Val Gutierrez last year. This girl's tall, and she's going to be a, a key player in the future. But the majority of this team's coming back. I mean, there were, what, three seniors, I think, on this team. And um, they're, they're all, you know, this team's coming back. So this game right here is showing the girls what it's like. If you're going to go to the state playoffs – you got to beat teams like this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it, unfortunately we're down 28 and a half. But, again, I, I know how our girls will battle. Now, whether they come back and win, only time will tell. But I guarantee you they're going to be fighting until the end of this game. So we'll see what happens here in the second half. Anything that you, you kind of saw in the first half that you think we need to change or need to do differently? I mean, like you said, you know, we held we – held the really tall number, what is she? 21 Rollins. 21 Rollins. We held her back. Our post girls are amazing at that. No matter how tall they are, are like you said earlier, they're like little chihuahuas. So we can always keep them outside of the paint. We can do well. But Connolly, you know, in Fowler has a, a very versatile player. Uh, like you said, she goes from a guard to a point guard. I, I, I'd be hard-pressed to say she couldn't play post easily. Um, so no matter what we do with her, she spins it around and, you know, takes something else, takes something else. Um, so I, I think our focus needs to be on her. Really, you know, <laughs> we try to push them outside. They can shoot outside. We push them in. Obviously, they can shoot inside. So I think we just need to have everyone kind of stick with the players, stick with, um, you know, their game plan and try to roll with it. I honestly, and, and, and you know, I know, Coach, if he's listening, he's going to probably cringe and <laughs> call me an idiot. But um, an I idiot. would almost, at 28 points down, I would almost say, okay, you know, it, I Man always man. go. I always go back to the the 1980 hockey team that just shoved the game of the Russians right down their throat and went after them the way they go after everybody else. And like I said, I would I wouldn't mind just saying, hey, we're down 28. Let's try man to man. Let's see what happens. I think I think for this game, it's kind of what we need. I was going to say that, but you know, I didn't need to get pelted. <laughs> but <laughs> a man to man would be the good choice because we do have some tough girls, and if they had just one person that they're focused on, I think they could take them, um, e even with the size difference. Height difference, yes. Weight difference, we've got some pretty solid girls low to the ground. And being a short one, too, I know that that solid low to the ground does a lot. So you can do a lot with it. You just have to be put in the position to be able to, you know, use it. I, I think the biggest fear, and, and I understand why he doesn't do it, is the biggest fear is the summer that I coached them, that's all we played. I wouldn't let him play his own. I, I am from Kansas, and – and zones are kind of a bad word in Kansas. You you play man to man all the time, and I force these girls to play man to man. But we graduated 
seven girls from that basketball team. So I think the fear of these girls didn't get to play in the summer. They didn't get to uh, practice man-to-man all summer long in, in fall leagues. They didn't get to do that. They didn't get to do it in the summertime because of COVID and everything. And so I think that's the fear of the man-to-man is just too much, too many people that don't have um, all that playing time under their belt. That's the only thing I can say that would probably keep us from doing that. But um, but we definitely got players that can get it done. And it's funny for me because I, I was on the, on the Carson and Grace bandwagon a lot, the year before last when we had this team when I knew they were sophomores and everything. And and I I really felt like Grace that year, she felt like she wasn't part of the team. She felt like no, – actually, they were freshmen that year, I yeah. believe. Yeah. Because they, they've been with Helm since they were in junior high, seventh grade. They've been playing with the big girls. So, you know, Grace didn't feel like, I don't belong with this team. I shouldn't be here. And that's the way she felt when she came to the summer practices. And I kept telling her, girl, <laughs> just step up to, you know, get it done. And and by the end of the summer, before she got hurt, hurt her, her ankle, she turned into quite a scorer. I mean, she she's – that girl works hard. It's unfortunate, though, that she hasn't gotten that – female build yet of 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 girth and she's so skinny she does get knocked around a little bit but it she definitely gonna fight you i mean it doesn't matter if they're you know bigger stronger whatever grace is coming to fight and that's what she's doing tonight she's done a great job and then carson my god that girl's at least seven to eight inches taller than carson and carson's keeping her in check so we're about 30 seconds away from the second half starting. I guess we'll see if you want to go over the commercial, uh, the the people that don't have commercials as far as yeah, for sure. sponsors. We got them. We have Westies, State Farm, Snap Fitness, Ronda Reagan Realty, The Pearl, and Diesel Dogs, we'd all like to thank for being our sponsors to have us here. So now I don't know when it's going to happen because the boys are supposed to be playing Lhasa tonight. I'm pretty sure that's happening. It, I can't imagine. I think they already canceled it. Did they cancel it? Um, wow. I'm thinking they did. So anybody that was going to, if you didn't already know, uh, as soon as this game was over, I was going to have to pack my bag, get everything thrown in there, and fly to Lockhart to call a girls' soccer game. That soccer game actually got canceled because of the temperatures. And I can feel the temperatures because we're, I I swear, if you want to hang meat right behind us. Yeah, I think we're sitting outside. (laughs) (laughs) It's like we're sitting outside. It is cold in here. For as nice a gym this is, you would think they have heat in it. But not on this side of the court anyways. I'm sitting here looking right at Fowler right now, and she just relaxed, kind of smiling. When you have a leader like that that just, they don't show a lot of emotion, that's always calming for the rest of your team. Oh, for sure. So the Lady Lions will start with the ball in the second half with their starters on the floor. The Conley Cougars will have their starters as well. Johnson will get the throw in from Carson Smith. And here we go to start the second half. Destiny got a, oh, I thought she got away with the travel. Destiny gets a little bit of hurry, but I guarantee you she's going to go 100 miles an hour the whole game. So 750 here in the third quarter. They've got Grace up against the big girl now, Rollins, and Carson doing a great job of double teaming her. Fowler with it from three, no good. Ball's tipped out of bounds by Rollins. It's saved, and they give it back to Rollins. She misses the shot, and a foul is called like 10 Mm -hmm. days after. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that one. I don't agree with it either. That's a third foul on Grace Stoffel, team first, and they bailed her out because she missed the shot, and I do not think she touched her at all on that shot. So the first shot by Rollins is no good. I had to say something to Grace. He getting a little getting a little ticked off. Told her to calm down. Second free throw by Rollins on the way. She's got a nice shot, but she comes up short on both of them. <clears throat> Grace gets the rebound, and now Johnson's going to go against Robinson. Robinson has been a headache. <laughs> For Johnson tonight, she's a good defender. Destiny on the right side. When we get a break in the action, we'll talk about a little bit about what's coming ahead for us for um, Lockhart Sports. Inside it goes to Grace. She gets tripped, and I think she rolled her ankle. I hope not. We'll see. There she goes. There she goes. Yep, she's fine. You just made her mad now. Yeah, just don't look at her. So 
So Grace comes out of the game, and for the first time tonight, Angela Galindo, who is quite a player as a sophomore. I want to see what Galindo does with this big girl. They throw the ball inside to Fowler. Fowler scores on the backdoor layup. And she now has 17 points. 40 to 10. 6.50 to go third quarter. Natalia to Johnson. Natalia on the right wing is going to drive. She's going to try to get it to Galindo, but throws it away. Fowler comes out with it. They might as well just sit Fowler after this layup. She scores again. She now has 19. There's no reason to get your stars and hurt when you're up 32 points. But they've definitely sent a message out to whomever they are going to be playing next because they haven't let up at all. They're going to call a travel on Carson. And Garcia is going to check in for Destiny Arizona. Ball's thrown in, and here comes um, Wright to bring it down the court. Barrera, I can't believe we're letting her open like that. Fowler in the corner, uh, rims off the three. Garcia comes up with it. Garcia is going to attack, lays it up and misses. Johnson with the rebound. She gets fouled, and I believe that's on Fowler. That's going to be her third. So her third team first, and Malaya Johnson with two points is going to go to the free throw line and shoot two free throws. And nothing but net by the sophomore. 42 to 11, 5.59 to go here in the third quarter of play. Something's happening with Fowler. I don't know if she cut herself or something. She, earlier she had a bandage. She ran off the court and threw it in the trash. They're trying to fix that right now for her. I think when they were playing in their little offense-defensive thing before the game, somebody actually cut her with a fingernail because, yeah, she was having trouble then too. 30-point lead for the Cougars as Malaya made both free throws. They throw it inside to Robinson. Galindo does a fantastic job defensively. And there's no way she was going to get a shot off. Angela Galindo, the sophomore, comes in and does what she does best, plays defense. Not to mention she can actually score, too. I'm a little surprised she hasn't been playing more, to be honest. Garcia is going to drive the lane, gives it up to Galindo. Galindo gets blocked by Rollins. And it looks like Robinson is going to come out there with it. Right, running the point. Honestly, you know, they don't even really need to put Fowler back in with the score where it's at. Garcia with a steal off Rollins. Wright tries to slow her down. She misses the layup. Johnson's layup is good. And that was a left-handed layup, I might add. 42 to 14, five minutes to go here in the third quarter. Lady Lions showing some life. They're actually tied in scoring here in the third quarter. Barrera from the corner, no good. Wright gets the board, going to pull up, shoot the left-hander. No good. Smith with the rebound. Out to Garcia. Now Robinson on Garcia. She's not going to have as much luck against Garcia on the ball handling there. Johnson shoots, misses. Ball's loose. Natalia will run it down. She'll find Garcia. Garcia from three. It hits the top of the rafter, and it's going to be uh, out of bounds. But the Lady Lions are doing a great job. They're scrapping in there, and they're getting the shots. They're just not falling. I want to give a shout-out to Josh Cargyle, my QA tonight. Thank you, sir, for what you do. Um, Kerry Smith for the production and color commentary. And myself, Scott Smith, doing the play-by-play. -play. The Lady Lions are still battling. They're doing Lockhart justice with their heart and intensity here. And then I don't believe Wright meant to bank that in, but it went in. She now has six. 44 to 14. Johnson brings it down. They have taken the full court pressure off of us. Johnson's layup is good. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at a future superstar here in Malaya Johnson. She's now just taking it right down her throats, and she has scored six points here in the third quarter. 44-16, Wright going against Johnson. Misses the shot. Smith with the re or no, Galindo with the rebound. Out to Johnson. Here comes Johnson again. 
gives it up to Natalia. Natalia lays it in. And who are these girls? Oh, my goodness. Look at this. What do you mean who are they? This is what we've watched all year long, right? Exactly. They start off a little nervous, a little scared. I'm not saying we're going to come back for you know, against Connolly. Connolly is a great team. But this is what Lockhart Lady Lions do. They come in there, they get a little spark, and they realize that they can do it, that they can do anything. Oh, it's so frustrating. Eight to six, Lady Lions here in the third quarter. Now, they have taken off the pressure. I mean, they're not pressing us anymore. Right, right. No but, doubt. but still, this is a great basketball team. <laughs> so to be ahead in a quarter against Conley is saying something because this team's going to go some places. They've got height. They've got guards. They can do it all. Yeah. they got a three-point specialist. I mean, this team's loaded. They've been impressive. Definitely, definitely. I would have liked to have seen the district because I would have to think they took second in their district. So I I'd like to know who second. took first because we I think we took third in our district. Mm -hmm, you're right. Anyways, whoever it is got to be pretty good. So Barry will throw it in for the Lady Cougars. And they'll throw it in to right, and she'll bring it up the court. She has six points tonight. Over the top it goes, as now a lot of other players getting some time as Lopez came in. Ball was kicked by Johnson. Looks like um, our Johnson, their Johnson is also into the game. I don't think she's played tonight. Barry's on the court. So the only starter on the floor right now is – oh, I take that back. There's two starters on the court. Robinson drives the lane, gets fouled. Galindo is going to get called for the foul. That's her first, team second. 3.01 to go third quarter. Conley throws it into Robinson in the bucket. Galindo didn't see her, and she got the easy layup. So Robinson now has four points. 46-18, 2.50 to go, third quarter. Johnson has the ball up top against Robinson. Over to Garcia on the right side. She's going to drive baseline. They'll kick it out to Natalia, who needs to be shooting. I wish she was standing somewhere near me where I could yell at her. Johnson tries to go to the lane, and they're going to call a jump ball as Wright did a good job of jumping in front of her. Actually, we may have gotten away with the travel. <laughs> and it looks like the Lady Lions will get it, so Carson Smith will throw it in. Now she's not going to throw it in. Huh. What just happened? Not sure. Oh, no. I guess it was a jump, so they ended up with the ball. So Wright will bring it up. Wright and Robinson are the only two starters on the court right now for Connolly. Shot is on the way, no good. Natalia comes down with it out to Johnson as Lopez couldn't hit the shot. Good job there by Robinson, and she gets the steal from Johnson. Over the top they go. Johnson on their team gets the ball, and it went off her legs, so it will go back to the Lady Lions. So Robinson will check out, and... Gomez Hyde will check in, so that leaves Wright as the only starter left for Con Conley on the court right now. 46-18, Garcia with the ball. They're putting up three-quarters court pressure here on us. Again, once we get a dead ball situation, I will explain what's going on for the rest of the way for the boys. Natalia takes the shot, misses. Wright comes out with it. Wright gives it up. Barry will have it in the corner. Over the top it goes as that is uh, Gomez Hyde. It throws it inside to Johnson. Her shot is no good. Rebound by Johnson, and here she comes the other way. She'll take it to the hole and misses the layup. Ball's loose. Garcia gets it. Garcia throws it up, gets fouled, and it's no good as that foul will be called on right, her third. Team second, and Garcia will go to the line to shoot two. Looks like they're going to bring Rollins back in. And the free throw rims out. Rollins will come in. Johnson will check out. Mm 
Does it say what year Johnson is? Johnson, I believe, is a freshman. Okay, she, she's a good player. She really is. Wright gets the ball. Natalia knocks it away. Great play by her defensive player on the inside. It's funny to call her defensive player, and she's on the inside because she's been a guard most of her life. But this year, she plays down low. Wright has it up top. Closing in on a minute to go here in the third quarter. Lopez throws it in the corner. Barry Rollins inside they go. Gomez Hyde will kick it out. And they call three seconds in the lane on Gomez Hyde. And with 50 seconds to go in the third quarter, it is 46 to 18. Johnson's going to drive the lane, kicks it out to Natalia. Shot is no good. Ball's loose. Smith and Galindo are in there fighting for the jump ball, and I think we got one. Smith will throw it inside Natalia. She'll put it up and scores. And thank goodness the seniors finally shooting the ball. It is now 46 to 20, 30 seconds to go third quarter. Natalia with six points now. They toss it inside to Robbins, or Rollins. In the corner to right. Into Rollins. She'll turn around, shoot. Was blocked by Galindo. And Natalia and Barry fighting for the rebound. They get another jump ball. So it will stay with the Cougars with 17 seconds left. Someone needs to look at Rollins, and there she is. And she misses the shot. Barry gets the rebound, but she got help to the floor. <laughs> Who is I'm that? pretty sure it was on Galindo. Yes. I kind of <laughs> thought so. Galindo picks up her second foul, team third. Barry will throw it in. That's why I like Galindo. She's a physical player. And she gets the rebound against Rollins. And they call, call for a travel. As a sophomore who hasn't played pretty much the whole game until now, mm -hmm. she's doing a very good job. They get the ball inside to right, and they're going to call a foul. I believe that's going to go on Carson. Yeah. At least she did what we said. She's going to shoot. Don't let her get to the free throw line. I mean, get the layup. And that will be the third foul on Smith. That's the team fourth. Wright goes to the line where she has six points tonight. First time to the line tonight. She'll hit the first one. 47 to 20. 7.7 .7 seconds left here in the third quarter of play. She misses the second. Rebound Galindo. Out to Johnson. Up it goes to Natalia. And she scores with two seconds left. And that's how the third quarter will end, 47-22 after three. Lady Lions trying to battle back. You're watching Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vibe Live. You can tell the Pitmasters are making the magic happen every time you walk through the doors of Kreitz Market. The delicious smell of smoked meats greets your every visit. Not going to be in Lockhart for a while? Kreitz Market ships nationwide. Stop by Kreitz Market at 619 North Colorado in Lockhart or find us on the web, kreitzmarket.com. That's K-R-E-U-Z market.com. No sauce, no forks, just good taste naturally. For over 15 years, Rain and Drywall and Paint has been serving Lockhart and the surrounding counties. We are experienced in all phases of construction. You can count on us for any exterior or interior painting job. Call 512-925-0634 to schedule an appointment with Rain and Drywall and Paint today. All right, we're back here getting ready for the fourth quarter. It's a 25-point game. Just to give you a little um, highlight here, Lady Lions 12 Conley Cougars nine there in the third quarter. So they battled their way back, and it looks like uh, they're going to continue with their bench with the exception of Fowler and Wright. Every, the other ones, again, she does a great job of keeping about two starters out there and just intermixing with them. The Lady Lions will go with their starters minus um, Arizola, and Garcia's in there. Garcia tried to drive. Great job by Robinson. I guess Robinson's also on the floor. I missed her. They get the steal. The ball's knocked away by Natalia. 
and Conley will keep hold of it. So whenever the boys decide where they're playing, when they're playing, everything else, we'll try to get that set up, and and uh, Carrie and I will be there to give you the show. I don't know when it's going to be. They're going to try to play on a Friday night, which would be next week. Fowler drives the lane and scores. She now has 21. I, I mean, myself, as a, a, as a coach that could go deep in the playoffs, my starters wouldn't even be seeing the floor right now. I would try to save all of them. Garcia drives the lane, misses the layup. The ball is loose. Johnson gets the rebound. They'll kick it over to right. Robinson drives and it falls short. Ball goes off the hands of Galindo and out of bounds. Grace will check in for Galindo. So Angela Galindo gives some really good minutes inside the sophomore. I think now coach is just like, I'm just going to let my girls go until they foul out. Fowler in the corner. Three-pointers no good. Grace with the rebound. Not only can Grace rebound and play inside, she's not a bad ball handler. They say Johnson steps out of bounds. That's going to be a turnover. Morgan will check in for Carson. Six fifty to go here in the ball game. Just a reminder: there will not be a girls' soccer game tonight. That was canceled due to the weather out there. So Wright tried to go to the lane. Morgan gets the rebound, and guess who gets in there for the jump ball? Fowler. Twenty-one points and all kinds of other stats to go in her pocket. They're going to say the jump ball will stay with Connolly. That's right. We had it on the other end. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I thought so, too. I was like, hey, <laughs> we might be getting one here. So Robinson will throw it in for the Cougars. They get, oh, what a seal off by Fowler. And she scores an easy layup, giving her 23. A steal by Wright into Fowler. Fowler over to Robinson. Robinson gets blocked by Garcia. Wright again. Fowler's going to drive the lane, and she's going to get fouled by Johnson. That'll be her third. So Robinson will throw it in for the Cougars. Fowler kicks it out. Right from three, no good. Garcia with the rebound, and now she's off and running. She's going to drive, shoots it, and scores. Mandy with five now. 51 24, 6 10 to go in the ball game. <clears throat> they get it inside, and they're going to call the foul on Grace, and she's a little flustered, but she's doing what she can. That'll be her fourth foul, team six. They're in a the bonus from here on out. Galindo will check back in. This cold air is so bad on me, my, my, my old bones are starting to get all tight no, on me and stiff. It's not that. It's just <laughs> cold. My feet are frozen. Fowler from the corner from three. No good. Rebounded by Robinson. Ball's loose. Johnson and Fowler going after it. Fowler comes up with it, misses the layup, and Natalia comes out with it. She'll throw it up to Johnson. Johnson's going to drive the lane, throws it up, gets fouled, and she's going to the line. And I believe that's going to be on right. It is. That is her fourth, team third. So Johnson will go to the line where she's two for two tonight. Her and Natalia are two points away from uh, having a two, uh, ten point game tonight. Doing some more coaching, sorry. So the free throw goes in. And she now has, I believe, 10. Or did she miss the first one? She nope. I was gonna, did she? Okay. She made them both. I thought she made them both. So she now has 10 points. Fowler drives the lane. Nat Natalia with the steal. 
And they're going to call the foul now on Robinson. That's her second, team fourth. Natalia, the senior, trying to go out with a bang here. She has eight points, and she's really playing hard, playing well, getting things done. Garcia will now have it. You'd like to see the seniors go out playing well. Johnson with it on the right wing. Drives the lane, shoots it, gets blocked by Robinson. That's another girl that can pretty much do everything. She's not very tall, but she's played well tonight. So Johnson will check out for them. Rollins will check in. And Hernandez, I know she's a senior for them, is checking in. And Robinson checked out. Johnson gets it over to Morgan. They hand it off to Garcia. 5.15 to go in the game. She'll drive. In trouble, Galindo gives it to Johnson. Galindo loses the handle on it, and Hernandez gets the steal. They try to get it to Fowler. Now they finally get it to Fowler. She'll give it to Barrera. Barrera shoots the layup and scores, and she now has 11. That's the first two-point bucket she's made tonight. All of hers have been three-pointers. It's a 6-4 to four score here in the fourth quarter, so the Lady Lions keeping it tight in the second half. Unfortunately, they were way behind when the halftime rolled around. They'll get it to Johnson. She's going to drive the lane. She shoots. Rollins blocks it. Galindo with the rebound, misses the layup. Barrera gets the uh, rebound. Down the court it goes. Fowler over the top to Barrera. Barrera from three, misses. Hernandez with the rebound, back to Barrera. In the corner it goes. Hernandez's shot is no good. Fowler gets the board. She'll kick it out, nobody's there. Garcia trying to run it down and does. And then she lays it up and scores. Garcia with seven. Yeah, that's the one thing with Garcia, do not give her that ball. <laughs> A couple of inches ahead, she will always catch it. 53 to 28. Six to six here in the quarter. The Lady Lions won the third quarter, 12 to nine. And it's not like the Cougars have said, now nah, we're going to put our starters on the bench. Their starters are out there. They're just intermixed with some of the bench players. And they're still playing tough. Yep. They're not giving us any leeway. Morgan tries to get the board, but Rollins comes down with it. Inside to Fowler. Surely that's going to be it for Fowler if she scores another bucket. As a matter of fact, she scored all but two of their points in this quarter. Timeout is called by the Lady Lions with 3.16 to go in the ballgame. It's 55-28 Cougars. You're watching Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vibe Live. Chisholm Trail Barbecue features slow-cooked brisket, hot sausage, beef, and pork ribs done the right way. In a town famous for barbecue, Chisholm Trail is where the locals come to eat. Visit Chisholm Trail Barbecue, 1323 South Colorado in Lockhart, and come by after the game. Chisholm Trail Barbecue stays open until midnight after every home football game. All right, we are back, 316 to go in the ball game, and at the conclusion of the game, we'll give you your Chuck Nash offensive players of the game, and we'll give you your Johnny and Sons defensive players of the game. Uh, you, like I said when we came out, the girls weren't going to go away. Um, they won the third quarter 12 to nine. They're only losing the fourth quarter eight to six, so they're battling right there with them. They just buried a hole early on, and again, Conley has. Played a lot of the bench players, but they haven't taken their starters out. Their starters have been playing throughout the whole game. Um, I'm surprised Fowler is still on the floor. She has 25 points, and you got more games to play. You don't want her getting hurt out here in a game that you've got sewn up right now. Grace will get the ball on the wing. She throws it inside as um, Ariaga has now checked in. They throw it inside to Grace and over her head and out of bounds it goes. So we got some subs coming in on the other side as well. Lopez is going to check in and Cruz is checking in. Hernandez checks out. And I missed the other one that checked out. Was it Herrera? Yep. Number one. Yep, Herrera checked out. So it looks like they still have... Uh, do they call a foul? Mm. Or do we not have somebody in the book? 
What do we got here? Oh, nope. One of our girls is not in the book. Ours? Yep. Number two. Amanda. Amanda Gamboa. Yep. So she was not in the scorebook. So Gamboa, not because of herself, but because coach didn't put her in the book. Technical foul. Chisholm Trail Barbecue oh. features slow cook. <laughs> Thank you, Chisholm Trail. Fowler shoots both technical free throws. She makes one of them. They'll get the ball back. She now has 26 points. Again, kind of pointless that they're still out on the floor with just under three minutes to go. They're up 28 points. I mean, if you're a basketball fan, you'd hate to see one of their stars go down to an injury in a 28-point game. Barry gets the rebound. Lopez gives it to Rollins. Rollins back to Lopez. Over to Barry. Inside to Fowler it goes. They'll kick it out to Barry. Rollins up top, going to drive the lane, puts it up, can't get it to score, and they're going to call a push in the back by Rollins. That will be her first foul of the night. Team fifth. Now they're coming with full court pressure, which I don't understand either. Garcia. She's going to drive the lane, gets the ball knocked away. Again, Barry gets it. Now Garcia gets it back. She throws it up. It doesn't go in. He's I called a technical. technical on the coach. The coach does get a technical. Wow, I didn't even hear or see much. Okay. <laughs> so Garcia, well, she's technical foul. She misses the first. I've never seen her miss this many free throws before. One for five from the line, right? And she makes the second one. She now has eight. 56 29, 210 to go in the ball game. Lions will have the ball here. As we find out what the boys are doing and who they're playing and where they're playing, we'll get that to you. Garcia against Barry. She gets around the corner, trying to get to the lane. Throws it inside to Natalia. Natalia finally hits that bucket where she now has 10 for the game. 56-31, 150 to go. Rollins gets the ball knocked away. Good job there by uh, Brianna. They throw it inside to Fowler. Fowler kicks it over to Lopez. Fowler from three, and she hits it. Again, I do not understand why she's still on the court. 59-31. She has 29 points right now. Garcia kicks it over to Brianna. Natalia. Natalia shoots and misses, and here comes Fowler. No, nope, check that. That's Barry. Barry throws it in. Cruz can't get the shot to go. Garcia gets the rebound. We're under a minute. Garcia has Natalia on the right wing. Over to Gamboa. All this, all of our seniors are on the floor right now. Yes. And Gamboa turns it over with 41 seconds left. 51-31, or 59-31. Fowler will take it out to half court, where I think they're just going to try to run the clock now at this point. You know, so although they are running the clock now, it's something that I do like about Connolly is that they kept playing the whole time. Nothing deflates a team more than you stop playing on them. Um, I think that's a classy move. Fowler just running that clock. Barry now throws it inside. And they're going to call a foul. And I believe if that's on Grace, that could be it for her. And it is. That is, nope, I'm sorry, that's four fouls. I'm sorry. 
Now they're calling her out now. Yep, I guess that is five on her. So Grace will foul out. Morgan will check in. Grace fouls out with one point tonight. She had a lot of rebounds and played outstanding defense in the paint. And I don't see who's shooting. I can't see the shirt. Cruz misses the free throw. And they'll get the ball to Lopez. Lopez shoots and misses. Morgan with the rebound. And Garcia comes up with it. And the time runs out. Garcia can't get the shot off. So your final score tonight is Conley 59, the Lady Lions 31. We're going to go ahead and give our commercials some love, and then when we come back, we'll have your offensive and defensive players of the game. You're watching Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vibe Live. The University Interscholastic League would like to thank its corporate sponsors. Without the generous support of these sponsors, many UIL activities would not be possible. The UIL gives special thanks to Balfour, Baylor Scott & White, Dairy Max, Dairy Queen, Ford, Box Sports Southwest, Gatorade, Hellas Construction, Max Preps, the NFHS Network, Nike, Register My Athlete, Spalding, and Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. These generous corporate sponsors support the UIL in all its activities, music, academics, and athletics. The UIL appreciates these sponsors and their participation in all that the UIL does in Texas extracurricular activities. On behalf of the UIL and its corporate sponsors, thank you for supporting UIL activities in your community and enjoy the game. If you're more of a my money works for me kind of person, you're going to love free Kasasa cash checking from First Lockhart National Bank. With a few simple qualifications, your account will earn a great rate on the money you have with us. To learn more about Kasasa cash checking, head on over to First Lockhart National Bank. Meitler Storage is locally owned by Angela and Darren Meitler. Since 2002, Meitler Storage is just off Highway 142 in Maxwell, Texas, across from the Valero. For an appointment, call 512-398-7100. Your business is always appreciated. And a reminder, once a lion, always a lion. Go Lions! Green Group Holdings is a proud sponsor of Lion Country. Green Group is an environmental services company that specializes in the planning, implementation, and operation of waste disposal, recycling, reuse, and restoration projects. These projects are designed with the environment and safety as the highest priorities, with an approach that provides significant value to the communities in which they're located. Currently, Green Group is proposing a development in northern Caldwell County, 130 Environmental Park. This proposed project will be a state-of-the-art, environmentally friendly, mixed-use development a few miles north of Lockhart, Texas. <clears throat> All right, we are back in the final score again. Uh, the Lady Cougars of Connolly, 59. Your Lady Lions of Lockhart, 31. To go through the scoring, third quarter, well, let's just go through all of it. Six in the first quarter, four in the second quarter, 12 in the third, nine in the fourth, and that was the Lady Lions 31 points. On the other side, it was Conley 23, then 15, then nine, then 12. So if you look at the second half, it was a washout, 21-21. That's how your Lady Lions play basketball all year long. Doesn't matter who they're playing, doesn't matter what they're going up against. They're going to battle to the end, and they did as they tied the second half, 21-21. Going to give a shout out to Coach Helms. Your girls played well. They played with class, and they did what they expected to do. They battled to the very end. Uh, scoring for the Conley Cougars, Barrera had 11. Um, Fowler had 29. Robinson, 4. Rollins, 4. Wright, 7. And Barry had 4. On the other side, it was Mandy Garcia with 8. Uh, Malaya Johnson with 10. Grace Stoffel with 1. Natalia De Los Reyes with 10, and Morgan Missouri, or yeah, Morgan Missouri with two, and that was the scoring there. Your offensive and defensive players of the game. <laughs> oh my goodness. The offensive and defensive players of the game. For the Johnny and Son defensive players of the game, they had to hold down Rollins. I'll tell you what, Rollins is a heck of a player at six foot tall. Carson Smith 
and Grace Stoffel had the business of having to stop her, and they will be your Johnny and Sons defensive players of the game. And on the offensive side of things, it'll be going to senior Mandy Garcia, sophomore Malaya Johnson, and senior Natalia De Los Reyes as your offensive players of the game for Chuck Nash. So, again, the Lady Lions went down battling. They tied the score in the second half, 21-21, to but they fall a little short. want to give a shout-out to my QA, Josh Cargill, for uh, – Doing the QAing tonight, making sure everything was set up for us and all that. Uh, Carrie Smith for uh, producing and doing the color commentating and getting things, kind of giving you a background of our coaching staff and the players that we had playing tonight. And for myself, Scott Smith, we appreciate you uh, being part of this game. When we find out when the guys are playing, we will actually go ahead and uh, let you know what's going on. Carrie and I will be covering that game for you. Uh, Carrie, any last minute thoughts about the game tonight? Man, it, if you got to lose, you got to lose like that, right? The, the, the girls came out, second half, played. This is what we see over and over again. I'm hoping it's just because they're a young team. Next year, we got to get over it. <laughs> got to get over ourselves. We're all learning that in life, right? Don't be afraid. You're better than you think you are. Get out there and play. Well, the girls, they, again, they tied the <laughs> a beast of a team, 21-21 second half. Um, if you literally take out their star who scored uh, 29 of their uh, 59 points, you take her out of the equation, the score is now 31 to 30, the Lady Lions win. So, you know, it's just, like you said, it was just a little too much of them, and we just didn't really believe early on, and then came out in the second half, played great basketball. So that'll do it for us tonight. Again, thanks to the QA, thanks to Carrie, thanks, you know, for myself do, calling the game. You guys – Went out fighting. That's all we can say. The seniors, we are going to miss y'all, but I'm sure you'll turn out to be great people after graduation because you're already well, great goodness, people Chris. now. I mean, the, the seniors, just a great group of girls. They are. They and really are. Um, going to miss them. So that'll do it for the Lady Lions season this year. Ten and four in district play. Fantastic season. Ended up third in their district. Go down to Conley. Again, the final score, 59-31. You're watching Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vibe Live. Good night. Good night.